Hello everybody, Cedric Procedure here, CR Wrestling Commentary. We'll be going over the card of Ring of Honor, Honor for All. There, uh, I'd say it's a major event. And overall, it's one of the, Ring of Honor just, it's, it's not easy for them to fail. They fail in tiny, tiny little moments, but no. But not overall, but this. This event, top to bottom, straight up, Five star awesomeness. Love it. There's no, there's not a bad part in this event. Mm -mm. Not one bad part. I love it. Not one bad match. All the matches, all the outcomes, everything in between. It was good. It was good. Now, while we go over this, I will be doing some crafting in Final Fantasy because I uh, bought too much shit. But <laughs> hey, Cedric, you know you you got the card in hand. Okay. All right, then. So we're gonna start with the first match. The first match was a pure rules match, and that was Taylor Rust versus Tracy Williams. That now look, Brian Johnson's on commentary, commentary. Yeah, and talking shit the whole time. Talking that shit, and I mean, woo wee. But um, Taylor Rust is someone that Ring of Honor has not necessarily promoted all that much. Mm -mm. He hasn't, had, hasn't had that many matches. Tracy Williams is someone that they have promoted a lot. But Tracy Williams and Taylor Rust did face each other in the original uh, Pure Rules tournament to, de to determine who the Pure Rules, first Pure Rules, uh, after it's after they brought it back was going to be and in that match uh, uh, Tracy Williams won so you know from the promos Taylor Russ is looking for a little bit of a little bit of get back so, and, and he was looking for it and in this match this pure rules match oh my goodness look we're not going to go blow by blow in this alright no, so don't it, get it twisted there's no way we really could especially for the pure rules match because this that's match, a unique animal right there and ring of honor I hope they don't get rid of it. I do too. I hope they don't. The Pure Rules division was beautiful. I mean, Chef Kiss all over the place. Just this match here show this shows their technical expertise, their ability to counter and and whatnot. Really, because Taylor Russ was countering. He was hanging with Tracy Williams. Hell, he's ten years his senior as far as, as wrestling uh wrestling goes. He started in two thousand four. Tracy Williams started in two thousand fourteen, but their the move by move technical expertise was extraordinary. And the ability to counter and get out of holds, it was great. The, I mean, I could watch it again knowing the outcome. No, we could watch this whole event yeah. again. You know this. This is this is a five star event, and Ring of Honor is doing it up. Um, this move that I can't remember what um, Riccaboni had called it, but it's a it's a double leg laced, um, double ringing armbar. You know, like the, you know, like the rings of Saturn, but you know, with your legs. Yeah. And good grief. Now, Williams got put in it before in this match, and you can see him struggle. Mm -hmm. And I'm literally thinking, how are you going to get to the damn ropes? Because mm -hmm. both arms were null and void. <laughs> but he got there, and I didn't see that much help from Rust. I think that he helped a little bit, but see, he did it so well, it ain't like you can just see it. So that's beautiful. He did a good job. Oh yeah, when you log in, just remember where you are. Okay. Okay. Um. But they <laughs> it got to a point where literally they were so tangled up with each other. You just saw arms and legs and, and legs. a little and a little knot. You didn't know what was going on. You didn't know what move was on. What was being hurt? You just know something was hurting. They worked this match smooth, beautiful. They went through the rope breaks. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Tra Tracy Williams. Now, hold up. Before I go to the end of this, you got dang 
um, what's his name, Brian Johnson, like, why you call him hot sauce? He looked like a jar of mayonnaise. And yeah. I'm like, what the hell? That mess was funny. It was like, okay, okay. And I'm like, man, <laughs> Brian Johnson kept pushing the, the, the envelope on insults. He he was he was pushing it. Mm-hmm. He did not hold back. Um, something else. Um, when it got to near the end, this is when I felt bad. But it was so. How, how can I say this? When you lose, but it's so awesome. You seem like you could be the winner. That's you know in in terms of work ethic and stuff, yeah. Tra- Tracy Williams he got put in that move again, mm-hmm. and he was fighting it. You could see him fighting it, fighting it, and he got that arm got cinched in, and his eyes bugged out. Yep, and and, that, and he he could he had to just shake his head and acknowledge, yes, yes. I surrender, and because you know Tracy he's got a sh- he's got like a chronic shoulder injury. Yes. And usually he's got this this thing, this cross chest uh, shoulder brace that he wrestles in. But I guess when he's doing particularly well, he'll take it off. So he didn't have it on this time. And uh, he, he probably got it on now. It was good. It, I, I thought that they did a great job with that match. Taylor Rust performed marvelously. I, and everyone's talking like Ring of Honor is over. I don't. It's, I don't. It, I don't think it's over because they got bookings for next year. Yeah. Keep that in mind, everyone. They got bookings for next year. If they treat, if they treat this, um, like we can start a new, let's revamp and all this, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be all right. Um. So. With that, you know, you know, we we gonna get to the uh, next match. Okay, so let me pull it up. Um, the next match was a four corner survival match uh, with the ladies. Uh, the winner gets a, a shot at the ROH Women's World Championship. It was Holiday versus Quinn McKay versus Trisha Dora versus Vita Von Starr. And um, look, we ain't gonna hold back. We're gonna get into some things that might be a little risque. That we normally don't talk about, but the women put it out there. All right, they put it out there. Are you gonna wrestle? Honestly, if you're gonna show off body parts, we're gonna talk about it. Mm-hmm. We talk about this stuff with the dudes. You know, we're gonna do that with the women. So they had Alize on commentary with Rick Abani and uh, Caprice Coleman. And Caprice was like, "I do not like you, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna show it. I'm gonna be epically snarky." I don't think he was as mean with her as as Brian Johnson because. You know, Coleman with Brian is <laughs> you can tell Brian he gets under Coleman's skin so bad. Mm-hmm. You can tell. Um but I'll say this. You know what? I can say that Coleman's he had he had a, a lower level of respect commentary wise. Not we don't know personal, we don't know none of that. Yeah. Commentary wise, he had far less respect for Alize as he was so dismissive with what he was saying. Yeah. That was the difference. He was so dismissive. Um, but outside of that, let's get on with this match. So Rita, uh, Vita Von Starr is part of Vincent's group. We've seen her cheat for them, and we've seen her come out and prance and, and do splits. Uh, she wasn't in the women's tournament for the ROH Women's Championship because she interfered with one of the men's match, and so she lost the shot to go for the title for Conda and becoming a wrestler. So we've never really seen her wrestle. So when I saw she was in it, I was like, okay, we get finally get to see what she can do. And she's good. Um, she's very good. She's very flexible. Um, she shows that quite often during the match. And so I'm going to go ahead and just get to what Cedric was talking about. Everybody had on a tire that covered their entire uh, you know, butt cheeks and crotch and everything. Now, keep in mind, y'all, Cedra had to point this out to me. I won't even give it a damn. Except her. So, she's uh, she's a slim woman. She's fit. She, you know, she's a wrestler. She doesn't have hips. 
She doesn't have a, a, a huge butt where the lot at the top and is real round, but she's got a lot at the bottom. And she had on these, uh, what do you call the lower garments? Trunks? Trunks, tights. tights. She had on these tights that had her lower butt cheeks um, hanging out. We're all familiar with female wrestlers. About 80% of them have their lower butt cheeks hanging out, whether they have a lot of butt cheeks to show or not. Which I don't understand why. But she had the lower butt cheeks hanging out, and you can see where the, the garment went between the butt cheeks, of course, as it goes between the legs, covers the crotch, up through the front. Okay, so she put on... What kind of move did she put on this woman? It wasn't... It was it was like a rolling neck lock. It was a chin was lock. Bridging. Yeah. It was a bridging, a bridging chin, chin lock. lock. And she was bridged up on her toes, beautiful bridge, but the shot that they got when they panned was right between her legs and that garment just disappeared between her butt crack. You couldn't see any genitals, no, but it looked like she didn't have anything caught anything on, but it was real quick and they didn't go back to show it again. Which was really good on their end. Yes, so Cover your butt cheeks, man. <laughs> the moral of the story. Okay, let's progress. So the way it was working is two people start off with the ring, and then when someone gets knocked out or rolls out, somebody else can jump in and keep going. That was the, the uh, format of the match. And, um, you know, butt cheeks or not, all the ladies performed well. Uh, Holly Dead is a shit talker. <laughs> she called Quinn the K Mighty Mouse when she got in, which is perfect. Quinn needs to be called Mighty Mouse Quinn McKay because she is a tough little strong mighty bite. And we are Quinn McKay fans. We are. Hey, I'm a Holiday fan now. Yeah. I'm a Holiday fan. I'm a Trisha Dore fan. And um what's the what was the other one? You know, Vita, Vita Von Star. Vita Von Star. I like her. I <laughs> have she seems good. Yeah, she's she a crazy good. person. That's her her gimmick, hanging out with Vincent and Dutch and them. Um, but her in ring performance, she was good. She was polished. She was safe. That's what we could see. You know, we don't have insiders' eyes like that. You know, if we had worked around them in the business for ages and ages and ages, okay, we might have a different thought about it. But no. So it was a very good competitive match. Man, Quinn did a, what did she do? A plancha suicida? The perfect suicida. She landed it was completely perfect. front of her body, completely on the front of the body <laughs> of a, a Trisha Dora with a splat <laughs> on the was, floor. She threw, she, she ran, dove through those ropes. She hit splat right there on top of her. Perfect. 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 It wasn't that push off that they're doing now that I don't like. No, she hit and it looked like a move and it suicida is is uh espanol for suicide. So it's not a suicida if only one person gets hurt. And they were both equally damaged and laid out. But let, let, I'm gonna call it out. I'm gonna call it out. And it doesn't detract from the match at all, anyone, okay? But when Quinn hit and they landed, I don't know if she was grimacing or smiling, but she like she had to have the time of her life. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just saying, all right, just saying. She just seemed like she was a little little happy, mm -hmm. and ain't nothing wrong with that, you know. But she needs to work, uh, as Cornette would say, on her facials when it comes to certain things, because you don't want to just expose. I just her. wish he would say expressions. <laughs> Everybody else in the free world thinks a facial is something else. Yeah. You know? No. What? <laughs> expressions. You need to work on her expressions. She alright. <laughs> okay, so this match, yeah, it's whoever gets the pin first. Mm-hmm. And I can't I know who won, but I, I'm, and I know it was with um, ah, uh, was it a power driver? Uh, because when it happened, uh, yeah, it, yeah, we knew it was a rat. I can't remember. I can't remember what it was. I can't remember what it was. It was Sorry, Eva Star that called it. But yeah, I can't remember what the, what and, the movie that Holiday and, put. Yeah, on. Holiday. She. It was like I, I think it was a power driver of some sort. Sorry, guys, but it was yesterday, and I wasn't really. Thinking about covering this at all, and uh, but when when Von Star uh, when she knocked 
Quinn, uh, no, it wasn't Quinn. It was Trisha Door out the ring. It was the way she did it, and I was like, and she fell. You know, she fell. Um, Holiday was getting up, and I was like, that's it. That's all. I, I, it was just, yeah. It was uh, after it was after the suicide when they both went down. Yeah, I was like, that's it. Yeah. I was like, this is over, and I knew Holiday was gonna get it. Because and now in the beginning, I would not expect. Honestly, I, I really thought it was going to be uh, Quinn or Vita to win. I that I, I had pegged one of them to win. So Holiday got that got her finishing move and got the pin. I was pleasantly stunned, caught off guard and surprised. Yeah, and yet happy because I can't think of any one of them females after what I saw. I really can't. I wouldn't be able to pick a winner. No. Hey, like, Sergio, who do you want to go over in this match? I don't no, know. No. Just have him wrestle until I can figure it out. But Holiday was very ecstatic and, and healing it up, going to shake hands and then snatching it away. Holiday. <laughs> no, I got to point this out. Okay. Okay. Trisha daughter, she shows up and you can tell she's got some some weave going. Yeah, she's got locks weaved into her hair. Big old long locks because her hair is thick and normally throwed out, but it's not that long. Not that long. She can long. get that much length in a few months. Me and her need to sit down and have a conversation. For real. I want to know what she do because the hair that I'm losing on top, I want to I pull that out. Let's, let's get let's work. Let's work. But um, Holiday grabbed her by her hair. And what she say, Cedra? I'm going to get off your hair, baby. Something it was, like that. It was audible. Mm-hmm. Get off your hair, baby. And she did. Yeah. But I was like, man, those words alone let you know the type of family that Holiday had come from. <laughs> there's a there's a big mama in the family <laughs> that's still kicking and had a lot of influence on the 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 kids in that family. That's what you can tell. And if Big Mama ain't here, you know, her influence is still felt. Yeah. That's how she spoke. She spoke like a big mama. All right. And if you want to know what that is, that's a grandmother in charge. Mm -hmm. It ain't the grandmother that people come by, see, pay their respects. And when they leave, it's like, I don't care no more. We ain't around mom now. No, this is the person that is the matriarch even past their time. And, and you listen to what they say when you're with them, when you're not with them, when they're living and when they're dead. So if you want to know, <laughs> You know, that's what Big Mama is. And that's how it is. And it don't matter what color your skin is. That's what a Big Mama is. And that's what they do. So I just want y'all to know that. And it, it, it tickled us. Okay. It tickled us. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So look, what's the next match? Um, one second. I ran out of fire crystals. So I, uh, I sent you eight. Uh, oh, cool. The next one. Oh, okay. So the Briscoes went to GCW and took the belts from their tag team champions. Took them, and so the GCW tag team champions want their belts back. So, oh, so the, they were the, they were the former champions. Yeah, I, I, I believe so. Yeah. Um. So the it was the uh, J and Mark Briscoe versus um, AJ Gray and Effie of the Second Gear Crew from GCW Wrestling. That was the match. Now the GCW belts. Pretty colors. It's all good, but they look like toys. All right. It looks like the plates move with the leather. That's not a good look. <laughs> but I get it. I get it. And they even made a point of letting you know that it was a what it said. What did Rickabani say? You did it was a violent smash mouth. He tried to put them over positively. No, no, ain't nothing positive. I watched their shows. It's shit. It is shit. Yeah, Effie, one of the wrestlers, he was like, oh, the, the, out, the Outlaw Mud Show, something, something. Yeah, here. who let the Outlaw Mud Shows in? No one, because we do what we want to do, yada, yada. And I'm like, you, oh, you, you, you suck. You know, because I've seen Effie wrestle twice. Nothing impressive. Don't give a damn. He just sucks. All right, I put him below Yujiro. But hold up. Hold up. Because the match started. Uh huh, and Effie brought it, and because it was a Ring of Honor and GCW rules, it was basically no rules. But it was 
Effie bought it. He did. He did. And, and I'm like, he was this, going, ain't the, this ain't the GCW Effie that I saw. He was going toe to toe with Jay Briscoe and and laying the, laying the blows in, laying the punches in. The Briscoes. I'm gonna tell y'all. Look, look, straight up. The Briscoes led this match uh, by and large, but not all of it. Mm-mm. All right. In addition, you could tell that the Briscoes told him, "You're gonna come here. You're gonna act like you got some wrestling sense and not that dumb shit you do. You know, a game changer wrestling." You could tell that he had an influence. You tell the Briscoes was like, "You ain't gonna, you know, we're gonna get hardcore. We're gonna do your thing, but you ain't gonna get stupid. You're gonna respect Ring of Honor wrestling." Yes. You know how the Briscoes feel about Ring of Honor. They love Ring of Honor. So, you know, Briscoes are not happy with what's happening. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Briscoes seem to be the type that would just buy Ring of Honor instead of letting it go away. And if they did that, I would push Ring of Honor to the moon. Just me. And, hey, look, I would be telling on every, hey, watch Ring of Honor on this. Because it was bought by wrestlers that love and adore and respect pro wrestling. And y'all need to get it on I'd be all about that, you know, and you can see it in this match. And that other dude, I can't remember his name. Uh, you, you got his a, name? Uh, I think it's said AJ Gray. What's his middle name is? And maybe. Yeah, AJ Gray. So I don't even remember what, exactly what he did in the ring. You don't? That was a little black dude. I know who he was. I just can't remember anything that he did. He, heavy on chops. Good. He had a, um, he gives a pretty, I thought he gave a decent toe kick. Um, I mean, I love a toe kick now. You did that to me, Cedra. Loving a toe kick. And nobody toe kicks like women, but yeah. Mm. Look, when women Old toe school kick, Japan women. They're trying to um, get through to the uterus. Yeah. But I say that's Gaia, you know, but not those old school Japanese female wrestlers. Even when Victoria and them were wrestling in, in, uh, in uh, TNA back in the day, they were toe kick. It's like, dang, man, you should have caved in her, her whole reproductive system. You know what? You got a point there. <laughs> you, got a, you got a point there. <laughs> Trying to alter the fertility in that bitch. <laughs> so, this this match, A, hey, Briscoe's J. Jay Briscoe can't wait to kick somebody in the face. Mm-hmm. He throws one of the best damn boot kicks in wrestling. It's authoritative. It's it's high impact. It's you quick. know, it's very quick. You think he ran with his leg up the whole time? <laughs> That's how I feel about Minoru Suzuki's too. But he ran across the ring. It's like, how did you get your leg up and keep your forward momentum? I, yeah, it amazes me every time. I've seen through Minoru Suzuki's boot kick. I'm not going to expose it. I just know it's really awesome how he does it. I likes it. I likes it. Jay, though, not only does it look... Ep- when he missed, it lets you know it would have been bad if he hit. Mm-hmm. And when he hit, hold up, y'all, it looks the same. <laughs> and the impact is more or less the same. I just wish that for the opponent that they would sell that kick more. You know, because that... The way he throws it, it could be a finishing move. It really could. Jay Briscoe got one of the best damn boot kicks in wrestling. Um, if not the absolute best. But this match, this was a fight. It was a back and forth, mixing it up battle. And it spills outside. They get the chairs. They jack up the chairs with slams on it and hip tosses and missed moves. They get the table. They try. They get a, 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 a net break on the table. Didn't break. You know. The match was brutal, but and, and look, Mark Briscoe on the the match is Mark Briscoe with that table and Effie. He hit that froggy bow, perfect, mm-hmm. perfect camera angle, perfect everything. That froggy bow is awesome. That that is great. Love it. I, I like the name. I like how he do it. You know, perfect. Jay Briscoe on the inside hit that J driller, that butterfly spike pile driver. Yeah. He hit that beautifully. One, two, three, they retain. And then after it's over, the Briscoes, a hey, handshake. That handshake means more than what y'all think. The Briscoes don't do handshakes too often. That handshake is like getting a handshake on a great British baking show. You got to do good work. To get the fucking handshake. Pizza dude here and he ain't got no damn mask. You know, he's a dumb motherfucker. You know, that... What I want to say is the handshake... That handshake is almost like an invitation to come back. 
you know, we'll go there. Yeah, clearly that's what's going to have to happen. But for all intents and purposes, for what we see and how y'all handled yourself, you know, y'all good. They did good work. So, like the Great British Baking Show. They did good work. <laughs> so, next match in this, this like, straight up awesome event, you got Jonathan Gresham versus Brody King, and that's for the number one contendership for the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship. Or I think they just call it the World Championship. And, you know, look, look, you got to watch this match. Yeah, it's um, it starts off fast and furious, and don't really let up. Yeah, it's it's you know the code of honor, the handshake, and then and then uh, uh, King Rush Gresham avalanched him in the corner, pulled him out, Gonzo, Gonzo bomb, bomb that power bomb power driver. And as soon as Gresham hit, he was rolling he towards rolled the ropes, the ro- and Brody was like, no. Nah. Pulled him back, went for the cover. And Gresham kicked out while grabbing the ropes well, and, and getting a hold of him. He, yeah, he kicked yeah, out he kicked, first. He kicked out first. Brody, of course, couldn't believe it, and we kind of couldn't either. And then, <laughs> yeah. Because that Gonzo bomb was nasty. And he, uh, I mean, it was good. It was good. But then, what happened? They went to the outside, and Brody just brutalized Gresham. Mm-hmm. Just bru- just slamming him, throwing him, doing whatever he want with him. He got him against the post, and he tried to chop his head off and hit the post, and his hand was wrecked ever since. And the sound it made, it was like, almost like metal hitting the post. He, he really unleashed when he was going to try and chop him against that post. Yep. Hopefully, honestly, the gimmick is that under the tape, you got some, some kind of leather or metal under it. So that he would hit that instead. Hopefully. Maybe not. Maybe he was like, you know what? I can just do this. Because wrestlers will do that. You know, I can just chop this with my hand at full force. It don't mean nothing. And they realized I made a mistake. I made a mistake. You no, know, it looked good on paper. I've done that in real life. And I ain't even full-fledged it or nothing like that. But look, this match here, yeah. It was a little bit later. Uh... You know, look, we're going to keep it real. Keep it real. We're watching the match while we're going over it. A lot of things happen. A lot. But the one that, this one stood out. We did not need to watch it for this one. When Gresham's trying to crawl away and Gre- and, and, and King puts down the chair and, and, and Gresham is audibly, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. King sets him in it, beats him a little bit, and then running, flying, crossbody, Gresham in the chair, and he had to eat all of that. Because it went against the barricade. The barricade might have moved about three inches. It did. But uh, it Gresham, wasn't enough. Gresham took all the, the, the brunt of that. And Brody King has got to be like 6'8", 300 pounds, 350. And he moves so fast. Brody King, here, here's, I'm going to be straight up with you. Brody King is one of them people, when he wins a title, if they do it right, he should hold that title for over a year. Mm-hmm. He should. You know, he, he should have just... a dominant reign like Roosh did. Probably more so. Yeah, I was about to say probably more so. Roosh had a beautiful reign. I like this reign. They didn't showcase him enough. Um, but I'll be honest with you, maybe, maybe that's what it is. You got to have that balance between we acknowledge you as champion, but we're also trying to get over the people that's going to challenge you for that belt. Yeah. So, you know, Rouge needed to just show up every once in a while. That's all he ever really needed to do. You know, cut a promo, go somewhere maybe. Um, in this match, Gresham at small points got a small advantage. Yeah, the, but the advantage he got, it take take him, you know, to equal out the amount of power and damage that Brody King can put out, it takes Gresham doing the same move about four times. About four, four times, four hundred times, four billion times. Mm-hmm. You know, is is crazy. I like this match. This match is. This was like a world title match. Yeah. To an extent, Gresham is small, and there's people, dangerous. Yeah, there's people out there that want to say, well, you're small, so you can't do anything. And it's like, no, that's not how it is. 
Use your height to your advantage. Use your lack of height to your mass advantage. And Gresham is trained in so many different styles of wrestling to be able to maximize what he can do at his height and size. He's done that phenomenally. That's why he's a joy to watch. Always. And if I'm if you know if I'm saying this right from what you uh, were saying, Cedra, Gresham starting his own promotion. Not gonna say all that's gonna be a, what it's gonna be about, but starting his own promotion. That's what it looks like. They're having their first the show in Atlanta in January. But um it's called Terminus Modern Age Grappling. That's more than a name for a show to me. That that kind of gives it away. Yeah. And wasn't it Terminus Modern Age, Age. Grappling? Yep. Him, Terminus. Him and this other dude is their brainchild. Somebody black can't think of the first name. So that's, I mean, Gresham is trying to keep people employed. I wonder if it's going to be a holdover for Ring of Honor. You know, it'd be cool. I know it might sound messed up, but it'd be cool if Gresham starts this in case Ring of Honor decides to go debunk and fold. And then people of Ring of Honor have a place to go where they can do all that, where Rick and Bonnie and Coleman can go and build that from the ground up. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be all over that if they do. But there are a lot of people who are not going to... There are a lot of people who are not going to fit the foundational mold. Yeah, but if they have it like this, where you've got your pure wrestling and you've got, you know, because it's modern age. Yeah. If you don't put modern age in it, then it would be great. But for this match here, just to keep it going, Gresham and King found themselves in some very uncompromised situations. Mm -hmm. But at the end, Gresham got a hold, got a sleeper hold on him, warmed down. Gresham was trying to get him off, warmed down. And this is after he tried that. He got a yeah, he got a good power driver on him as we're seeing right now. But he couldn't lock the hands. He had to do it one handed because that right hand was jacked up. And then Gresham got that sleeper hold, and he was he was going out. Now he got him, and he you know what did he do? He he put the hammer fist on him. He broke him down, mm -hmm. put the sleeper back on, mm -hmm. locked him, and Brody was out. It looked like, and the ref raised his hand and dropped it, and it, it woke him up. Yeah. That that right hand dropped. He's like, oh. Shit. Pain woke him up. Woke him up. And he was moving around and Gresham still got him down. Still got him down. Ran off those ropes and slammed that forearm into him. Back of his head. He did not see it coming. He did not see coming. He got blasted. And Gresham got the three count. Beautiful. Makes sense to me. It don't make a difference. Who throw a, 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 a fucking forearm to the back of your head? It's going to put you down. I'm telling you, Gresham got many ways to finish somebody, and that's a good thing. But in those ways, it's a set parameter of how he can beat somebody. It ain't like he's changing up all day long. No, he's got his set, I think, eight moves that he uses finishers, and that's it. That's it. And that's a lot. That's how I, and that's how I see it. You know, a set eight moves of finishers. And you just, which one, you don't know what's going to happen. It keeps the people guessing. And make a mouth so kind of be like, I hope you finish them this way because it'd be nice. No, it'll suit a game plan that Gresham might have. And that running forearm attack, that's honestly one of the weaker ones. In terms of, not weak as in power, but the ones you're going to see the very least. He's not going to go to that one too often. We've seen it one other time where he just kept using it over and over and over. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Y'all need to watch this match. We're not even saying half the stuff that happened in this nope. match. Not even half. It's awesome. Awesome. You know, but Gresham win and he goes over. So we're going to get on to the next match. Yep. Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship. So you got the original Gangster's Kingdom. Because that's what OG means. Yeah. The original Gangster Kingdom. Versus uh, Los Faccion Ingobernables, if I got that correct. Uh huh, because it's consisting of Kenny King and Dragon Lee, who are the tag team champions. In this match, 
we're not going to go over this in detail because it's a damn good no don't get it wrong it's a damn good match but how can I say this it's a back and forth unending match yes yeah, it was non-stop there's no lulls there's no get on with the period and nothing look I, I don't recall anything looking phony stupid fake you know even the dives outside the ring didn't look stupid you know, they did a good job. This match, look, the bottom barrel least of a star rating you're going to get a match is four. That's the least you're going to get out of this whole show. I don't think I would give any match a five, but I could get it close. So, um, this match, the primary main thing is the ending. Yeah, the ending was significant. Yeah, you can go over that if you want, girly. So, it was basically a team-on-team match the whole time. But as it started getting down to the wire, uh, Bestia, uh, was it, what, Bestia Say Say Say? I no, think. No, Be- Bestia Del Rey, that's his uh, name. Yeah. Bestia Del Rey, you know, Rushin and, and Dragon Lee's daddy came out, like he normally would, you know, to give them the upper hand. And trying to hold on to the titles. And after they came out. Then they came out. Okay. What uh, they did. See how confusing that is? Uh, yeah. You don't have to tell it to me. But you told me to go ahead with it. Yeah, so go ahead. Because after, after he came out, they came out. Uh-huh. I can't remember the bitch's name. Something Rose. And um, uh, she manages with Max the Impaler. Yeah. Come and, and Max, I don't care what your gender is. She's, um, and I'm, I'm saying she, although they want to be called they, uh, she was born a female. Um, I don't know what she claims now. I guess just they uh, is substantial and scary looking. So when she walked around the ring, Bestia backed up from what he was finna do. Um, and that allowed him not to cheat, and that allowed. Uh, Kingdom, I'm not calling him OGK. The kingdom, what, the original gangsters, Kingdom. I'm uh, the Kingdom. They're still lame. They're the Kingdom. Um, they got the win. They won the other uh, tag team titles, and uh, of course, King was all uh, Kenny King, who's you know part of Los and Governable. He Ellen Governable. He was all upset, and um, you know, at like he wanted to hit. What is her name? Amanda Rose. Some Rose. <laughs> And like I think he, it's Amanda Rose. And like he wanted to hit her, and then when he turned around, he caught this devastating spear from Max. Is it Max the Impaler? It's something the Impaler. I can't remember, and I I like her. I like her, and I wish I could remember. I think it's Max. Um, but he got speared out of everything, and then they left. Uh, and Amanda Ro- something Rose it was very satisfied because you know she got unceremoniously kicked out of. Out of the faction. Yeah, LFI. And she got, you know, beat up and left laying. So she's been chewing on this little piece of cold revenge for a few months. And see, here's what's messed up. Because they did this, with this thing with her and Kenny King. She got ousted. And she should have been on the warpath to get back at him. But she's got no dudes under her control. So the best she can do is the Impaler. And Mm -hmm. it sucks. Because you can't attack the Impaler as a guy because that's just going to look wrong. So you got to let her beat you up. But how, but how they did it in this? It looked good. It made yeah. sense. It wasn't like a, a, a monkey stomping. It was like a definitive move to put you down for anything you might be thinking. And then we peace out. Yeah. So it looked right. It looked okay. And she's got the size to put on the damage, especially the way she did the spear. Yeah. And then she got Kenny King with it. Put him down, mm-hmm. you know. So you know, the oak—they're the ones that are the new tattoo champions. <laughs> I'm gonna mess with this all day. Yes, but yeah, that's how it ended. And you just have to watch the match. It was a good match. I don't. I don't think anyone could take anything from this match. Mm-mm. New tag champions, even if it was the Kingdom, they did good. And the Kingdom's been featured on uh, National Wrestling Alliance. And they look good there, and they got a team over. Even though they won, they still got that team over. Yeah. So it's all good. Um, I just hope that all these companies 
can get their tapings in order so that nothing looks out of place anymore. Yeah. Because you don't want to show up at a company without belts, and then you win them in another company, but you won them, you won the belts way before you would have gone to the previous company. Yeah. It uh, don't look, it's weird. But unfortunately, when you're dealing with companies of different sizes, because, okay, so just to run through them, WWE is a big company. They're, they're on national television every week on schedule network it don't fail AEW is the same thing all the other companies are having to do it when they can so they got a venue they'll film who knows how many different shows at that one time and we don't know how they're going to air so it's just it's hard for nwa and mlw to to do it like that and ring of honor to do it like that and i understand i understand and i'm yeah. sure the listeners understand WWE can't be part of that. WWE is not a pro wrestling company. Yeah. They aren't. A pro wrestling company has no problem with subtle trades or, yeah, you can use this talent for a little bit, bring them back. You know? You can do that. No, WWE is isolated. That's not a wrestling company. They are a sports entertainment company. You know? And so next is a non-title but main event. No World disqualification. Cha- no, yep, yeah, no DQ. Not necessarily lazy booking in this. Mm-mm. Now I know that people like Cornette would call it lazy booking because he ain't thinking about the storyline and he don't know it because he'd rather follow companies that he's not so happy about. You know, so look, this this right here. It's not lazy booking because it's been building up for like, what, a year and a half? Maybe two? Because Lita does not like Bandito. And Bandito, she's like, no, man, we can still be cool. And Flamita's like, no, ain't happening. Not today, not tomorrow. I don't give a damn. Um, So, you know, yeah, Bandito versus Demone Flamita. And uh, and I'm going to let you take this because... As much as I like this match, I know that I, I'm going to give a sense of dismay because of certain things and criteria which would be false on my end. All right, because while the moves are good and they've predominantly made sense, I'm so used to them not making sense. No matter what company it is, I just I just get turned off to the match. So. It's not that they did anything bad. I'm just so used to bad stuff. And they didn't do anything bad. So I'm going to predominantly abstain from this. All right? I'm going to let you take it. So typically, um, whenever Bandito or, or Ray Ordus or the, uh, the Mina Flamita re- wrestle, they're Lucha Libre wrestlers, okay? Origins in, in Mexico. So that's how they're used to wrestling and it takes a lot of cooperation to do these high flying flip floppy things um that they do and sometimes you know it can be enjoyable to watch but with the three of them cycling through wrestling each other over and over again they have the same match so with demonda flamita being a baddie and then making this a no disqualification match it strongly changes the dynamic um, when they came out here and wrestled, you know, Bandito is a, is, is a good guy, so he's not going to be, you know, getting chairs and shit like that. No, there was none of that from on his hand, but it was just more direct. They they were wrestling like they had issues with each other, you know, so you have issues with each other. There's no need trying to pull off this amazing looking spot. The goal is to whoop each other's ass, and that's what they did. They did a little bit of this stuff, but mostly it was just kind of a... For them, hard nose wrestling match, um, and Demita's uh, Demita, mm, Demonic Flamita. Uh, you can't be mixing names. I know. He can't you know? He he kept up his 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 bad behavior and got up on the turnbuckle like he was going to do this great high flying spot and gave you know uh, middle finger to the camera and jumped down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always enjoy that. Like I'm not gonna do anything to near kill myself for you people, even though there's no people there. Um, so that's what made it a good match. It was no disqualification. 
and they didn't go, you know, you know, ECW on it. Won't tables and chairs and flames and shit. No, it was just basic cheats, you know, roll up, grab tights, and crotch shots. And that's basically how the how it ended. He got Bandito with a crotch shot. Bandito kicked out, and then Flamita went up on the top rope and got up there in a in a, a headstand. And Bandito got up and he just clubbed him. Right in the balls. It wasn't anything pretty or clever or sneaky or none of that. You know, because his balls are still hurting. He's like, you know what? We're going to both be hurting. He clubs him in the balls, grabs him, does the German suplex hold, and got the pin. And that was it. And it was actually one of their best matches against each other. It was. <laughs> and that's no lie. That's leg- it's legitimately one of their best matches. Because all the other matches, honestly, to me, were stinkers. I got tired of the damn over cooperation, and y'all hate each other, but y'all cooperating like it, crazy. It's hackney that it, we've seen it too many times. We've seen them help out for the twenty one plex too many times, and Bandito's style has slightly changed from when he first got there, and um, it's apparent. But this was a this is a much better match. You know when we, when they show the lineup for the show, and then they were like they're closing with this kind of like uh here they go again but they really did a good job what are your thoughts on bandito as champion do you think she he should be ring of honor champion you're asking me yeah um no you know i'm asking all of you who's listening i'm asking you know what do you think about bandito um, as champion you know don't go don't go by he, us you know we just we just doing what we do he was more dominant when he first got there but putting it on him then wouldn't have made any sense and yeah he's beloved he's a fan favorite but when you compare his inwork ability i mean he's strong i always like to play up his strength but that's the strength is not enough to be champion if you play up if you compare his in-ring ability to some of their past champions it's it's not enough. And honestly, I think the only reason that he won that belt is because Roosh was hurt. Roosh didn't get hurt in that match with Bandito. I think Roosh was hurt before that match with Bandito. And he had to drop the belt so he can go get surgery. That's what I think. Ah. So he's been hurt. You think he's been hurt for a while and he just had to figure out what to do? Yeah. I would have put it on Brody King. I would have put it on Brody King or Jay Lethal. Bandito, I'm going to say this. My gripes are not that of most people. It wouldn't be that. My gripes wouldn't be that he doesn't speak English. Nope. We can speak it, but it's, you know. And look, I'll be honest with you. It's, it's cute. It's broken and cute. It's, it's cute. It's adorable. And you know I'm, he's doing his best. Yes. So, okay. My gripe is... Once he became champion, the Rey Mysterio effect kicked in, and I don't like that. Oh, he's the ultimate face. No. That 21 Plex, one, he stopped doing it that well. Yeah. <clears throat> Two. He can the, only win with that. And fi- finally, everyone that sets up for it, it looks stupid now. Yeah. Because before, he would almost knock them into place. Now... I seen a dude get hit into the corner, into the turnbuckle, and then he scampers over to the middle. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh shit! To me, that just ruined every iota of him being champion. And make it look really bad. Um, the way at the field was, the way the pieces were in place on the chess field, that is chess boy, that is Ring of Honor at the time, it wouldn't have made sense because. For them to put it on Brody King because Brody King and Violence Unlimited were heavily battling with the foundation. And they weren't in the heavyweight title circle. Yeah, Roosh was kind of, Roosh and then Gubbadabba was kind of fucking with everybody. But Foundation and the Violence Unlimited were heavily enthralled. They were trying to get into the heavyweight title mix, but them going back and forth, it wasn't going to happen. Um, Jay Lethal, he's in the foundation. Um, he's had it several times and maybe they just wanted to hang it on a fan favorite who's been there, you know, a little bit and, but it's, 
they did it, but when you when you think of Bandito as champion, it's not like, oh man, he's gonna have it for a while. It, at most, he would be a transitional champion. That's what I thought. But then they put him up against Alex Zane. You can't drop it to Alex Zane. You just what the can't. hell? Yeah. So that that be oh god damn. I'm I don't. Gonna, they must, Alex Zane is good in his own right. You know when. When he's forced to do what's right. But Bandito or damn near anyone in the Ring of Honor going against Alex Zane is almost like Hulk Hogan defending his title against the Brooklyn Brawler. And That's how I see it. You know, I, I the way that things are, are panning out, even with them taking a pre, uh, an alleged hiatus until the spring, ROH, I mean, I think they've already laid out who they wanted to win the championship. And the uh, the stage is being set, especially with this this Honor Club, you know, exclusive event right here, Honor for All. The stage is being set for for Gresham to get the ROH Heavyweight Title. I hope that's what's going to happen. I mean, because he had the pure well for like um a year and fucking dominated it, and then dropped it in a hellified match with Josh Woods. And as soon as that was over, he was like, okay, I didn't I didn't solidify this chapter in stone. What I don't have is the big goal for the company. And he immediately start, started eyeballing Bandito. And he uh-huh. can beat Bandito with no problem whatsoever. They would have to have a shit-tacular match for Bandito to beat John Gresham. See? <laughs> All the reasons why Bandito can't have it. And Bandito wouldn't have made a bad champion, but he switched from what, from he, what was. he was to what he is now. Yeah. And that's where it went bad. And he needs more finishes than just that 21 plex. And that but part of the reason why this match between him and Demona Fumita was so good is because he didn't finish with that. It, but it was also no DQ, so it was okay. Yeah. Ball was, shot, roll up. Yeah. It's all right. Just not a finisher. It's not a heavy move. It's a no DQ move, so it can't really count. That's where I'm going with it. It can't count because it's a no DQ move. We'll just have to see. We just have to see. But hey, I hope y'all enjoyed this. You know, Honor for All was a good event for us. And we heavily enjoyed it. And our, you know, hey, our review of it, I hope you enjoyed it. But uh, we're going to get up out of here because there's other stuff we got to review. So what do y'all think of Bandito as champion? You know, don't just go on our words. No, 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 no. You can just negate ours and go with your thoughts. You know, we want to hear from you. So with that said, this has been Central Procedure for CR Wrestling Commentary, Ring of Honor, Honor for All. Thank you for your time, patience, and energy. Y'all take care of each other and everyone around you, all right? Pandemic ain't over. So with that said, good night, everyone. See you next time.